All right, hello, hello. All right, so let me get this started here. Let me pin this. Hello, hello. So, I will say I'm about to launch this or whatever, put it on uh, YouTube here. Uh, so don't message me here. If you DM me heavy metals, I'll send you some of the recommendations I'm going to talk about, like the zeolites that I use, like, uh, actually you can get the silver that I'm going to talk about on the same website. There's an empty bottle cause I just finished it, but I held on to it. Um, and then some of the other stuff I'm going to talk about while we're talking about heavy metals here. So if you want that, that would be a good place to start. I take a sip of water and then I'm going to get this going on, on, uh, YouTube. But I hope you're having a lovely Friday. I'm always excited for these, uh, lunch and learn sessions. These are my favorite, honestly, type of kind of day. Um, and then, yeah, we're just going to kind of jump into it. Um, okay. Let me launch this here. Uh, if you have any questions, I might answer a couple. You could put them in the uh, the question box down there in the corner. Um, at the end, I'll get to them. Um, unfortunately, because I, I have some notes I'm going off of, I'm not going to be able to get to too many questions during, uh, but after I can. So um, that's kind of the best way to do it. With that in mind, uh, let's get into heavy metals here. Okay, hello, 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 hello. Why does this happen? That's annoying. Okay. Gonna have to do this again, at least on on YouTube here. Because sometimes the audio gets messed up. So I apologize. I hope you guys are having a, uh, a wonderful day. By the way, uh, would you recommend bentonite clay? Uh, do I have a protocol? Yes. Um, actually going to be coming out with a course on heavy metals. It's going to be later this month. And I haven't mentioned this anywhere else yet. So you're going to be the first people to know. Um, you know, so I do have a membership that you can join for like just over a dollar a day. And what I plan on doing is actually... There'll be two options. So if you just want individual courses, say you just want this um, heavy metal course, there will be an option to obviously purchase that. Or you can join the membership and you will gain access to literally all the courses. And I will continue to add to them, um, you know, as we go. So uh, that will be an option. Um, so if you want to join the membership, now's a good time. Like I mentioned, uh, we are going to be... Uh, this heavy metal one should be ready. I'm hoping at some point next week, I have to just kind of build the page for it. Uh, everything's kind of edited. What is going on here? No, uh. So that's going to be spirulina is something actually we're going to talk about. I'm going to sh give you my favorites that I use in a protocol um, in this live. So you could stick around for it, um, but I'll, I'll have everything like written up. It'll be a lot cleaner, um, you know, in the course in like a PDF. So it'll be a little bit more, um, you know, easy to understand and, and whatnot. So hopefully that, you know, makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but bear with me. I see the question button again. Good. I'm glad you see it. I just want to get YouTube up and running here so we could uh, get the ball rolling. Okay. Because what happens is sometimes the audio gets messed up and it's really frustrating. Like right now, it is still messed up. Okay. All right. I apologize. Uh, what are your thoughts on fermented chlorella? I think chlorella is great. I use chlorella every day. Um, maybe not every day, but most days. Um, I think it's also great for like adrenal issues. I think it's great for 
um, uh, thyroid, actually. It's really good for that. Because I don't think people realize, like, any anything right now, uh, anything that you will do that that's from the sea, right? So that's going to include all your algae and such. It's going to be really great for thyroid, too, and adrenals. Now, obviously, you got to deal with the stress component, but, um, you know, it's really, really helpful. So chlorella, spirulina are, like, my go-tos in a lot of different... Um, protocols. It's really good. Hyperthyroid too. Yeah, actually, it'll be really helpful. Uh, so that'll, so that's something that can work. Okay. I'm just going to hope this works this time. Um, yeah, see, I love how I get the questions in kind of as I try to figure out why my microphone isn't working. This is like the fourth stream that I've tried to do. So you know what? We're going to end this. And I'm going to refresh the page because this is really frustrating. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, what brand do you recommend? If you DM me, I'll send it to you. Um, I'll send you all of it. I'll also send you the zeolites that I use. So I don't have to like repeat it. I'll send it directly to you. Um, so you don't have to ask any questions. Like it'll just be right there. So... That, that, I would say, is the best thing um, as far as the brands. Cell Defender is my favorite for zeolites. Um, I like the stuff uh, from Purium, but I could send you all the links with it. So after this, I will do that. This is like literally the third time I'm trying to do this. I am trying to toggle the audio source, but I'll, I'll show you. What's coming up here? Let me get to the page. Because it says the microphone. And the problem is once you start it, you can't switch it. So I'll actually show you what, what's going on here because this is kind of wacky. Um, yes, live, live reactions, whatever. Public. Okay. So here, check this out. So let me flip this. So want to go live right now. It says my default is my microphone, which is plugged in here. But you'll see, like, there's doubles of the same thing. So it's like, which one do I actually pick and which one's working? And I've tried a bunch of them. I'm going to just try the one on the computer at this point and see if it works because I don't know what's going on with this. So let's see. So you'll watch. You'll, you'll see. Like, I'm not crazy here. So... And this would be funny if it does work this time because this will be the one that keeps. Yeah, no. So you'll see, like, it's not picking up any audio. You would get some green bars here, um, which I'm getting none of, which is really frustrating because I really like doing these on YouTube as well. So I'm going to try this one more time. What's going on, Lily? I just got to put this down so I can figure this out. I'm going to unplug my microphone. I'm just not going to use it and I'm going to see if we can do this one more time. So if not, then I'll just go through this straight on here, but bear with me. Um, yeah, this is a bummer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the delay on this, but sometimes again, if someone knows the answer as far as how to fix it, that would be great um, because I am clearly not the tech genius, but I know how to do the basic stuff. And I don't know why today the basic stuff is deciding not to work, but here we are. It's all right. It's all right. We're going to get through it. Um, Yes, want the webcam. Default, and I'm gonna pray that it works this time. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. So, welcome on in. 
And again, if you have questions, put them in the box. I'm going to kind of keep that here. So hello YouTube, hello IG. Today we're going to be talking about heavy metals. Um, more importantly, like what are the things you can do about them? So uh, today I'll go over so, like most of what I would do in a general protocol for people. And I also want to go over kind of some of the dangers for them and some of the nuances. Because I think sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. Um, and I also think that it... I think sometimes just gets overlooked and understanding that like all minerals are metals to some degree. So like it sometimes, depending on who you talk to for whatever reason, like it could be, you know, a little tricky, but be that as it may, let's define heavy metal. So a heavy metal is something by definition is something naturally occurring. It's a naturally occurring element that has uh, a density that is five times greater than that of water. So it's the density of it is five times greater than molecular water. So that is what's considered a heavy metal by definition. If we're talking, if we're looking at say like a periodic table, that's how you would define it. Now there are, in my opinion, there's the five major um, heavy metals that are issues with folks. And they're aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury. So we got five. Um, they all, to some degree, are going to cause some issues with neuro neurological damage. And beyond that, you might get some issues with either growth retardation, um, so developmental issues. Um, you might get issues with other organs, particularly detox organs. Um, and there's a lot of different things you go on. You get to sensitivities, gut issues, it goes a long way. But like, if we talk about toxicity, I'll break each of these down a little bit here. So if we're talking about uh, aluminum, high aluminum toxicity, uh, that's going to be things, some symptoms of toxicity might include abnormal speech, myoclonic jerks, um, osteomalacia or osteopenia, um, Progressive encephalopathy. So in other, in other words, you're going to get some issues with the brain and in, in the head in general. Um, it could also lead to inflammation in the brain. And then unsurprisingly, uh, neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are associated with aluminum. Um, we're, we do believe that the mechanism associated with aluminum is essentially it impairs intestinal absorption. So in other words... If it makes you less viable as far as absorbing nutrients in the gut, causes damage to the gut lining, we don't get the same nutrients we would from food otherwise, and then we basically live in a, in a state where we're malnourished, effectively. That's what aluminum is doing. Arsenic. Uh, again, neurological issues are a big thing, but also peripheral arteriosclerosis. You actually may have heard of Blackfoot disease, potentially. Um, that could be an issue, proteinuria. So in other words, proteins coming out in the urine, um, milk and roses, hyperpigmentation. You could kind of look it up to see what that looks like. If you want, you could just Google a, an image, uh, garlic breath odor is pretty common sometimes with arsenic, um, and issues with the stomach, inflammation in the stomach, cadmium, you're going to get, uh, sometimes there could be joint pain, back pain, uh, osteopenia is a big thing, osteoporosis. So again, when there is an acidic or toxic environment, you're going to release a lot of the electrolytes that would balance the stuff out. Cadmium is one of those things that's going to cause issues with the kidneys. Kidneys is one of the main regulators of electrolytes of pH balance in the body. So that could be an issue. And with that, again, you can imagine you're going to get uh, artery disease, vascular disease in general, um, hypertension, so blood pressure issues. Again, once you start causing damage to the kit, to the kidneys, peripheral uh, vascular diseases in general are in play, hypertension's in play uh, because the kidneys are really uh, a big part of that. Lead, lead is a big one. So different types of anemia, especially ones like uh, iron deficiency. So it'll kind of mimic that. You'll see, you'll hear it microcytic hypochromic. So not very red and smaller blood cells, uh, re, uh, kidney damage. And we talked about what goes with that muscle discomfort, constipation, uh, a metallic taste in the mouth you might get with lead poisoning. 
And also, again, um, you're going to have mental impairments, especially in kids as they're growing if they're exposed to lead. Now, most houses are not going to have lead in them. If you live in an old house, like looking into replacing paint would be a good idea. But that's another one. But that's another one. And then the final one is mercury, which, again, we know is a neurotoxin. Um, when when there is mercury toxicity, a lot of mental uh, symptoms are going to be in play. Maybe trouble with sleep, trouble with memory, uh, fatigue, uh, brain fog in general. I, I know, again, kind of general, but uh, more disturbing or more apparent toxicity might be things like tremors, might uh, gum disease, again, kidney damage and lowered immunity. So, you know, mercury is obviously a big thing. Uh, so, so those are the five main heavy metals that you're going to deal with. It's mercury, lead, arsenic, aluminum, and cadmium. So what are we doing? Like, what is detox? Like, what is a heavy metal detox? Like we have, uh, detox is the ability to remove drugs, mutagens, and harmful agents from the body. Now, obviously we're going to do that using mostly foods, herbs, plants, to remove that along with other lifestyle factors. Now we have things that are known as heavy metal chelators. Now a chelator is something that binds uh, to metals. So it will bind to a heavy metal so that it can be excreted. Now technically, technically, or sorry, typically I should say, um, they're gonna include things like sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen that are going to uh, give an electron to these metals that allows for them to bind. So at, at a chemistry level, that's what's happening. You're having uh, an electron get donated. These metals bind to that. And then you can excrete them either via the urine, via stool, sweat, and ultimately get them out of the body. So that's ultimately what's going on. Now we talked about some of the dangers and some of the big ones. So again, mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, aluminum, other ones that you might see are things like nickel, uh, uranium, thallium. Um, there is a thing you actually can have toxic amounts of things like manganese and iron and zinc and calcium. Um, this is one of the reasons why I actually hate supplementing with calcium. I never recommend it. Um, I, I still am yet to come across a reason why I would, but, uh, you know, you can get to toxic levels of these and they could cause issues too, but usually that's exogenous or supplement supplementation or something like that. Now, we know, so according to a scientific world journal, toxic metals like arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury are ubiquitous and we know they essentially have no beneficial role in human homeostasis that we know of. Uh, and we know they contribute to what we call non-communicable chronic disease. That's most of our killers we have today. Heart disease, diabetes, cancer, um, you know, autoimmune diseases of all kinds, gut issues of all kinds. These are all what we call non-communicable diseases. These are the majority or what are, what are killing the majority of people. Um, we know that researchers now have identified significant exposure to at least 23 different environmental metals. And again, these are going to be called heavy metals, which can either cause acute symptoms or cause chronic issues. These metals are described as being heavy because they stick around in the body and what happens is they actually bind to fat cells, to adipose tissue. And this is what makes them particularly difficult to get rid of because um, essentially what the body does as a protection mechanism, it's actually fantastic, is if the liver, if the kidneys cannot cycle through a toxin at this point, instead of letting it linger in the blood supply to get all these other places, the body actually ends up storing it in fat tissue. So this is actually one of the reasons why, say, if you happen to struggle to lose weight and you've tried the calorie counting thing and it doesn't work or it becomes like a huge issue, uh, one of the things that may stop you or inhibit you from losing weight is actually holding on to these heavy metals. Usually if you could get them removed, if you could detox them, um, a lot of times the weight will come off because we're just holding on to these things for such a long time. Now, it's important to understand that like in, in modern society today, there is no way we're going to avoid these 100%. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, that it's, 
again, these are natural elements. So some of these we're actually going to find in even healthy soils, which is fine. Environmental, uh, but what happens is if we're exposed to them from other sources, say like the food supply, the water, um, what we're breathing, they can accumulate in the body tissues. And usually that's going to be fat tissue. And often it will start affecting the person and they don't realize it's happening. Because again, a lot of these things are subtle. Um, it's usually not an overt thing. It's something that's going to kind of build up over time. So it's, again, another reason why I think doing a detox, um, I would say at least twice a year. Uh, some will say up to four times a year, like seasonally. I think that's a great idea if you can. All fantastic options. So um, so that's a big thing. Now, we know long-term exposure to these heavy metals um, can lead to physical, muscular, and neurological degenerative processes. These are usually the, the things that are going to co come up. Uh, with severe, if they're long for a long, if they're around for a long time, they can actually mimic things like Alzheimer's, like Parkinson's, like MS. Uh, so if you're in the autoimmune space or neurological space and you start having some of these symptoms, my wife is a dentist, is a holistic dentist, and they have. I can tell you because I've been in the office. I've seen folks who have had things like mercury amalgams removed. They have some forgetfulness, call it you know uh, the beginnings of dementia, so to speak. Um, they will get these removed and within a couple days to weeks, they start thinking clearly, they start remembering better. Um, sometimes it's joint pain. Uh, it could be other neurological type pains. Uh, it could be, you know, uh, out to the extremities. It, it happens all the time. So, um, so that's a big thing. So what are some of the sources of heavy metals? Now, this is important because again, if you remember what I said, the definition of a heavy metal is something that is five times the density of water per unit, uh, per, per unit of density, or per unit size of whatever you're, you're measuring. So a lot of those minerals I mentioned, like iron, like calcium, technically qualify as heavy metals. Now, food and supplement sources that have gone through the microbial process are going to be different than free form heavy metals, say, in your water supply. So when you're looking at heavy metals, it's important to understand like where are they coming from? So for example, say we're talking about the soil, right? We have a lot of different microbes. We have groundworm. Sorry, we have groundworms. We have a variety of different things in the soil that are breaking things down that are adding humus, which is where you get humic and fulvic acid from, to the soil, making it essentially a healthier um, environment. Some of those heavy metals will be metabolized along the way and will be more feasible or usable. Now, these are also our minerals, iron, calcium, magnesium, manganese, like all of these are in the soil and, and are going to be what feed the food that we end up, the plants that come out of it that we end up eating. Essentially what's happening, a plant absorbs inorganic heavy metals and minerals from the soil. These heavy metals are soluble can be utilized in the body and can provide the core molecules to create the structures in the body. The body will then take amino acids and these and to make proteins and these proteins will fold around them to create the mechanisms that whatever they're using for the body to function at its best. So a lot of it boils down to energy. Don't most things. You know, plants can alter the state of metals or pollutants because there are metals in, in the soil everywhere. And again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Plants can absorb metals through the roots from the soil and change what metals are actually bioavailable. This is actually an incredible point. So plants actually have the intelligence to take what they need in the proper amounts from the soil in real time and then ultimately establish, change, like use that in a way that ends up in our food. It, it's quite incredible. So like it'll say, okay, this nutrient-dense soil has manganese and iron and you know, I need, you know, 50% of the iron and 100% of the magnesium and 82% of the manganese. And it will take what it needs in the ideal amounts if the soil has what it needs. It, it's incredible. And what happens is, and this is the cycle of, of life, right? It's, it's pretty amazing, you know, from dust to dust. Uh, so when animals decay or plants decay, say, in the soil, 
The microbes then break this down into fulvic and humic acids, which feed the soil, which make it more nutrient dense, make it rich and allow new things to grow. So this is actually like the beautiful cycle of life that we're a part of on this planet is, you know, remember energy is not created or destroyed. It's simply transmuted. So when this life ends for me, I will then become one with the earth again, or this body, I should say, will. And it will be used to grow other things so that the cycle can continue. So that energy will still cycle through. It will still be here. It, it, it's super fascinating, like how all of this stuff ties together on an energetic level. Um, but anyway, that's, that's more of what I was saying. So plants actually have an intelligence. They will take what they need, provided that the soil is healthy enough to do so. And get it in the optimal amounts, which then we can extract by consuming plants. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. It, it really is. Um, so again, in general, if there is heavy metal poisoning, like we went over some of the symptoms, but you know, just in general, if you don't know, say if you haven't done testing, like some things to watch out for potentially, chronic fatigue is a big one, any type of autoimmune disease, including Lyme. So I think a lot of what people call Lyme disease are usually um, issues with the immune system, which means a gut issue. And if there is an autoimmune issue, there is a gut issue. So, you know, be the, take that for what you will. Um, if you have a longer recovery time, say from exercise, uh, that would be a big one too. Uh, skin irritation, say you get breakouts, eczema, etc., rashes. Um, neurological disorders, we obviously talked about that, but even more subtle things like brain fog, trouble concentrating, uh, difficulty learning, poor memory, depression, dementia, insomnia, digestive issues of any kind, uh, including IBS, uh, chronic aches and pains, uh, fibromyalgia is a big one. Fibromyalgia is kind of a throwaway diagnosis anyway. Um, it's just, I'm, it, there is no, if it's when folks cannot figure out what's going on, they say you have fibromyalgia. So it's kind of a cop-out diagnosis as it is. Um, but there are things you can do for that. Tremors. And then when it gets really bad, you'll start seeing motor dysfunction. So, uh, loss or impaired motor control, hearing, speech, vision, and gait. That's, that's pretty far along if you're having at that point. Anemia, as we talked about. Uh, and a higher risk of heart attacks because we already talked about these are going to affect blood pressure, affect um, your vascular system, your arteries and veins, and cause um, issues. So, you know, where are some of these heavy metals coming from? This is obviously a big part too. And then we're gonna we're gonna talk about, um, you know, what we can do. How how do we get out of this? So mercury um, is the biggest one. And, and like I mentioned earlier on this call, and I'll continue to mention, like I come, I've had people in my family, my wife is a dentist. Um, I've had multiple family members who are dentists. So being in the dental space is just something that I've kind of been around. Um, you know, mercury is a big one. If you have amalgam fillings, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend, hi Haley, um, finding an IAOMT certified dentist, you go to IAOMT.org. I would write that down. I'll say it again. IAOMT.org. Um, it basically is a group of dentists. I've been to two of the meetings, I think at this point. Yeah, two. Um, which is where they, these are folks who know how to safely remove amalgam fillings if you have them. Um, and, and clean those things out properly. Uh, they also, um, also, at least for the most part, uh, no, I'm pretty sure all of them will not use like fluoridated water in their practices, which is again, another neurotoxin. So, um, that's kind of ideal. So that would be one thing. Uh, now environmental pollutants are going to be big things too. So traffic fumes, air pollution, food contaminants, cigarette smoke, uh, radiation, uh, one of the things with metal fillings I didn't recommend, I didn't say is sometimes they could slowly release mercury into the body. Now, some will say that, you know, after a while, those metals will stop leaching. But the problem is like when you heat them up, 
it can release fumes over time. So if you say drink something hot like a tea and you're constantly having hot liquids in your mouth or eating hot food and it's coming into contact with the, with a heavy metal, uh, in this case, mercury, uh, you know, some of those fumes can be released over time. If you do something really dumb and drink like a lot of coffee, which is hyper acidic, that's going to release even more and then kind of continue that path. So, you know, not something that's ideal, not something you're going to want to do. Um, okay, I am not generally a huge fan of eating fish, as you probably already know. But uh, what I would say is uh, it's definitely staying away from conventional fish and fish in general. Um, because a lot of fish, tile fish, swordfish, mackerel, tuna, uh, we know these have high amounts of heavy metals in them already. Um I would highly suggest staying away from fish in general uh, because, and a lot of this has to do with our own uh, kind of issues as human beings dumping stuff in the water. A lot of things kind of get absorbed and the higher you go up on the food chain, that's why you'll see things like swordfish and tuna end up having higher amounts of heavy metals in them because they consume other things that have consumed them. Uh, drinking water in general, tap water has a bunch of fun things in it, like fluoride and aluminum, which is a heavy metal, along with different antibiotics and glyphosate. So not great. Uh, one of the issues we're seeing, so we know that we're on a pace right now. If we continue on the trend we're on, we're going to end up with one in three kids in autism with autism. And, you know, a lot of folks in the conventional space will say, oh, hey, we have no idea. We're just better at diagnosis, which is... Uh, kind of comical if you think about what it would take to diagnose a kid with autism. It is, um, you know, if you see a kid who, you know, doesn't make eye contact, doesn't speak, is, you know, hitting the wall, uh, you know, frequently just so he can feel something, he or she can feel something. It's not exactly something you're going to miss diagnostically. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of even, it's comical that that's even a thing that we're diagnosing better. One of the issues that might happen is if you say have heavy metal exposure as a parent, or especially as a mother, uh, heavy metals can actually be passed down in utero. So if you have heavy metals in the blood supply, um, you know, in your body, and you get pregnant, those things can cross the placenta and end up in the baby. So this is also, this could also play a role, say, if you happen to get different sorts of shots or injections during pregnancy, this applies to that as well. Um, so, you know, do what you want with that information, take, take that for what you will, but it is, I would say, at least a significant factor in, in seeing what we're seeing with the developmental issues with kids coming out today. This is not by accident. This isn't get, getting better at diagnosis. This is an environmental issue that we're seeing kind of come through the tracks. And if anything, we should be starting to connect the microcosm and the macrocosm, but I will step off that pedestal for now. Uh, but that's something to kind of keep in mind. Also worthwhile, if you're planning on becoming pregnant um, or trying, uh, first of all, congratulations, but B, um, you might want to consider doing a detox, especially a heavy metal one before, so you lessen the chances of there being issues with the pregnancy. Take that for what you will. A lot of household cleaners also. Uh, mercury can, can actually be found in some of them. Uh, some other heavy metals can be found in things like adhesives, air, air conditioning filters. Uh, cosmetics is a huge one. If you haven't seen the documentary Stink, watch it. Uh, fabric softeners, felt, floor waxes, polishes, talcum powder, uh, tattoos. Hate to say it. I've never been a fan of tattoos. I don't have any. Um, so, you know, if you like them, I mean, hey, it's your life. I'm not here to tell you what to do. But a lot of those inks are going to have heavy metals in them that will leach into the body. Go figure. Um, exposure to things like, uh, that might have lead again, some chocolates can do it. Canned foods, especially more of the lining, uh, toothpaste, old paints, talk about lead paint, insecticides, ceramics, pottery, uh, pipes, soldered pipes can do it too. Um, household items, you know, uh, skincare products, antiperspirant, baking powder, baby formulas, plastic toys, antacids, aluminum foil. Don't cook with aluminum foil. 
uh, metal pots and pans, uh, at, at least, you know, not ideal ones, uh, stainless steel, if it's of low quality, uh, coins, uh, makeup, and then injections. We talked about that earlier. Uh, different types of injections are going to have heavy metals as part of it. And it's because the reason why aluminum adjuvants are added to shots is because you actually need to stimulate an immune response. So what they were finding uh, on a lot of – the reason why they added them in the first place is because what was happening is they were injecting whatever they were trying to do um, and was not getting a response. So the reason, say, aluminum is added, you have an aluminum adjuvant, is to actually stimulate an immune response. I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. But that's kind of like where we are with it. Um, now, as far as mercury goes, again, this is one of the deadliest metals that we have. Uh, we know uh, if you're exposed to mercury a long time, it damages the myelin sheath. Now, the myelin sheath is essentially like a fatty substance that wraps around uh, nerve cells that allows electric electricity to flow so that you can send nerve signals throughout the body. Essentially, it helps with the electrical signaling. It helps transfer that message along the neurological pathways. So, um, you know, do people outright die from heavy metal poisoning? Doesn't necessarily come up a lot as a, as a cause of death explicitly, but I mean, if you're talking about all the major things that we talk about, again, cancer, heart disease, neurological diseases, diabetes, this plays a role in all of them. So while you might not see it on the death certificate, you have to realize that this is an environmental factor that is massive, especially nowadays. And, you know, again, like overexposure to this can, can cause an issue, can cause a real issue. And if we're in a really acidic body, if we don't have the antioxidants we need, they can become even more of an issue. So, with that being said, I want to talk a little bit about what I would do, um, you know, if I was, if I was going through a heavy metal protocol. Now, I will say first, and, and I want to be very clear with this, is if you are interested in starting a heavy metal protocol, there are certain criteria that you have to meet, at least for me. Um, you have to be pooping at least once a day. You have to be sweating at least, I would say, three to five days a week. You have to be getting clean water, whether that is from using a filter where you can filter out things like chlorine and fluoride and aluminum, or you're eating a lot of raw fruits and vegetables. And again, I tend to prefer the latter. Those are very hydrating. They're more than 90 to 95% water, depending on the fruit that you're talking about. If you cannot eliminate these toxins via those elimination pathways, and you have four, pee, poop, sweat, and breath, if you're not doing those things, it's going to be a problem. You're going to run into issues. So you have to make sure that you're willing to do this stuff every day. If you can't get out and exercise three to five times a week and break a sweat, get in a sauna. If Take a hot shower. Like you have to, a hot bath, whatever it is, you have to be breaking a sweat at least three to five times a week. Exercising on its own is actually a very important detox mechanism, but I understand some people for whatever reason can't do high intensity exercise due to injury. If that is not you, it is time to get out there and start doing it. Uh, pooping, this is non-negotiable. If you cannot, here's the thing though, the reason why this is important, same thing with sweat, same thing with drinking clean water or eating your water. If you liberate these toxins with chelators, with, say, zeolites, and you're not eliminating them from the body, they're just going to get recycled and end up back in the fat tissue. So you're going to have to do the work again. So when I hear folks who are like, oh, you know, I did this heavy metal detox and it didn't work, but, you know, I sat on the couch all day, I never went outside, I didn't work out, I didn't, I, you know, poop four times a week. No kidding, like it's not gonna work. And it doesn't matter really what you throw on top of it because if you're not eliminating this stuff every day, it's just going to end up right back where it started. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Really important. 
Um, and, I, and I will hammer this home multiple times in, in the heavy metal chorus because it, if you're not doing this, do not expect what I'm about to talk about next to work. It might get you part of the way there. It might help a little bit, but you will not get the maximum benefit and you will very likely have detox reactions that are pretty intense if you're not meeting those benchmarks. Just want to make sure that it's clear. So, we have a few things that we can do to start. There's five steps, I would say, before we start adding stuff in. First thing we got to do is optimize gut function. Best way to do that is we eliminate the common food allergens. So dairy, gluten, corn, eggs. Um, I would get rid of all of them while you're going through this. Um, depending on where you're at, some people might like probiotics. Some people like digestive enzymes. I am of the mindset if you take it, you won't make it. I will, however, make an exception occasionally for enzymes because if your digestion is really out of whack, they can be helpful for a short term, but again, not something you want to rely upon. Number two, we want to optimize our nutritional status for detox. So, healthy fats. Um, you know, I like flax and chia seeds. I like, um, you know, you can use things like olive oil potentially in small amounts. I would rather, I would much prefer you eat the coconut or eat the olive than use coconut oil or olive oil. Um, you know, those are big things. Those are going to play along, uh, go a really long way. Um, you know, you want to get the amino acids you need, but again, if you're consuming even fruits and vegetables, you will get all the amino acids you need. It's just a question of, is your digestive tract working as well as it should? So, you know, with, um, protein digestion, is the stomach doing its job? If it is, you should be able to break them down into the amino acids you need because your body does not absorb protein. It needs to break it down into amino acids. Uh, because if you actually get proteins in, and this is what most people don't realize, gluten is a protein. The reason your immune system reacts to it is because it's not broken down into the amino acids that, that make it up. If it was, it would not cause a reaction. Uh, you want to get other antioxidants that are going to help too. Um, so selenium rich foods, zinc rich foods are going to go a long way. I'm not going to go into the specifics here, um, in the course I do, but you could Google a list. It's very straightforward, but you need to have high amounts of zinc, selenium. You need certain B vitamins, B12, B9, which is folate, uh, B12, B6, uh, B2 riboflavin. You could Google foods high on this, um, Again, there are all plant sources for all of these, even B12. I know people get wild out about that, but that's true. Uh, different seaweeds do. That Again, another reason to use chlorella and spirulina, but I'll step off that for now. Sulfur-rich foods are really important for um, liver detoxification. Garlic and onions, uh, collard greens, uh, kale, broccoli, a lot of your uh, cruciferous vegetables, which have sulfur-containing compounds, that are going to help, again, allow the liver to do its job so you can break down these heavy metals and eliminate them either through poop or through peeing. Movement. This is where you have to move every day. You have to sweat at least three to five times a week. This is not negotiable. If you cannot move, there is no replacement for that. And, and that's where I want to start. Saunas are not a replacement. They're an adjunct and they're useful if you can't move. They do not replace it. It is not as effective. I will be very clear about that. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is want to make sure you're pooping, you're peeing, you're sweating pretty much every day, and we want to increase our fiber intake. When we increase our fiber intake, that's going to help, again, with bowel movements. Start slow with that. If you're not consuming a lot of fiber, um, your bowels will strengthen as you get more fiber in, and it will, again, help with elimination. Not only that, those same foods that are going to give you the fiber are going to have a lot of the B vitamins, minerals that I'm talking about, especially if they're, they're organic, to eliminate this stuff. So that's it. Gut function, nutritional status, liver detox pathways, sweat, and elimination pathways. Those five things. I'll save this video. From there, there's a lot you can do. So what I would recommend as far as a uh, a day-to-day, -day, 
I would say if we're, if you're going to do your traditional breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I would say for breakfast, I would start with fruits. Um, you could do a combination of fruits. You could do a single fruit. Um, I would start my day with, with raw fruits, ideally. Um, that's what I would do. Reason being, fruits are, are going to be on the detoxification scale, going to be your best way to get started. Um, again, if that is too much for you and you need to add leafy greens and you need to have cooked food because the detox reactions are a little strong, you can do that. Understand that your body's always detoxing, but the, the rate at which you do it, you can either slam down or take off the gas depending on where you're at. And just because something might take a little longer does not necessarily mean it doesn't work. It just takes longer. Um, so I would start my day personally with straight fruits. Um, again, I'm not going to be very specific on which ones. Choose the ones you like. Go with that. Lunch. I would do, you could, there's a couple options. You could do fruits again. You could do a large salad um, with vegetable sides. You could do cooked vegetables. Um, you could do vegetable soup. You could do stir fries with vegetables. Like I would do mostly that. Ideally during the cleanse, I tend to prefer being more raw because again, you're going to get not only the fiber and certain foods are not going to be broken down to the same degree. So the more raw you can go, generally that's going to enhance your detox experience. Whereas the more cooked food you add might slow it down. If you're doing this in, you know, December or January and you want to have some cooked soup, hey, no problem. Like it, Use some context, use your judgment. The more you get more comfortable with detox, the more you'll kind of get comfortable with how to do this. But that's where I would start. Dinner, again, I would say I would kind of do the same thing as lunch. Uh, or I would, again, go back to another meal of fruits, melons. Again, yes, you could throw nuts in if you want or seeds. But I would try to keep it as raw, as clean and simple as possible. You don't need to overthink this. You don't need to do anything super complicated. In fact, it's, it probably will save you time as far as being in the kitchen. So a lot of this stuff is very simple. Find some dressings, find some soups that you like, have a lot of raw, fresh fruit around. Like a lot of this stuff is going to be really helpful. If you live in somewhere cold, great. Have a vegetable soup, throw some garlic and onions in there, throw some leafy greens, throw some, you know, carrots, celery, like do what you got to do depending on the time of year. But that is the bulk of what you're doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you need snacks, in my opinion, you can go to um, dried fruits and such. I would prefer fruit and vegetable juices or fresh fruits or fresh vegetables. Like that would be ideally what I would go with. So uh, it's more important to kind of understand like, like – as you're going and on Instagram, I want to share this because I could share my screen here on YouTube, but I want to share this because this is kind of really important. And if you understand this, I think it's going to help. So you're definitely going to want to save this live because this is what the, the course is going to be about. So we have kind of like a pyramid, a scale of detoxification here. And basically, like I said, detoxification never stops. But it can be slowed down. And if you're adding more stuff onto it, it could cause some issues. So if we go towards the bottom, you're going to have your animal protein, fish, dairy, eggs, etc. That's going to slow down your detoxification pathways. You know, you could take a step up by eliminating that stuff, all the toxic stuff, and going to nuts, seeds, cooked vegetables, leafy greens, and everything above it. If you go to raw fruits and vegetables, that's going to increase detoxification. You know, if you go to just fruits, that's going to increase detoxification. That's what I just explained, the fruits, berries, melons, lunch, and large salad, that's essentially the middle. So if that's too much for you, you take a step down. If you feel like you could go more, you could push it up. And that's essentially how you do it. It is a feel. There is no, it is an art. People want like one way to do it. It, it totally depends. Like I can guide you through it. I can walk you through it for months, you know, where to go. But a lot of this is going to be, you know, how you feel. And this is partially why joining the membership is so important because you can ask these questions and you could join them and you could say, hey, is this going on? Um, and I'll get back to you. I'll leave a message. So 
you know, and I could share all this stuff and I have different protocols, including this course is going to be a part of it. So I hope that's clear. Now, as far as things to add to this, I've got a few things. One is we have uh, zeolites, which I would absolutely start with as far as things you can add on. Cell Defenders, my favorite, like I mentioned, send me a message. I will send you this, uh, send you a link to purchase it if you want. This is my favorite. If you're looking for more antimicrobial and, and there might be some gut issues, I really like the Nano Silver. Now, this bottle's empty because I finished it today. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's super great to have around for any type of uh, viral type infections or anything of that nature. Um, there's some other ones too, but that's a really good one. But this is going to be a thing you're going to want to do regularly. I generally recommend five drops up to six times a day. You could even go up to five drops basically every waking hour. I would also recommend another supplement, um, and I prefer these from MediHerb. I don't have them here, but uh, it's either Kilico or Dermaco. These are going to be lymphatic supports, uh, me heavy metal supports that support the liver, lymphatic system, and kidneys. So one or the other. And then the third thing I would add is spirulina and or chlorella. You could do a blend. You could do both. Um, I think they're really helpful. So that, that would essentially be what I would do. I would do the cell defender. I would do Kilico or Dermaco. And I would do chlorella and or spirulina. Now, if you want the links to the spirulina, chlorella, and the zeolites that I use, just DM me heavy metals. I'll send it to you. Um, all of this will be written up, by the way, in the course, so it will be very straightforward. It'll tell you what to do, how much to do, etc. You follow it. You follow the dietary plan. You sweat every day. You make sure you're pooping. You're going to get this stuff out. It will take some time, depending on how much you have, um, and depending on if you have stuff in. So obviously, if you still have mercury amalgam fillings in, they're not going to magically disappear. So like, you might have to work with an IAOMT dentist to get that out. Um, you know, so, you know, do the best you can. That is ultimately the protocol. If you, you know, yes, it will take some time. Yes, it takes some getting used to. Yes, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of moving pieces. But if you do it and you stick with it, you will start seeing improvement. That's what it is. So I hope this helps. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I will save this. Um, and I'll tell you guys, uh, you know, you can share it, uh, feel free to share it again. The heavy metal course will be coming out later this month. You can either purchase it as like an a la carte type of thing, or you could join the membership for basically a dollar a day and you're going to get access to all my courses. So I will be updating that over the next few days, maybe this weekend. You know, my goal here is to share as much as I can in ways that make most sense um, you know, there's tons of stuff in there already with different protocols, etc. And if you need any help, just message me in the chat and, and just ask and I will show you how to do everything. So have a great day. Much love. See you guys next time.